Everything in our solar system is 4.6 billion years old. Every planet, every asteroid, every grain of dust, all formed together when the sun was born. That has been our cosmic boundary. Until now. On July the 1st, 2025, the Atlas survey detected an object moving at 57 kilometers per second through our solar system. Within days, astronomers confirmed it. This object didn't form here. It came from another star system, 3I, Atlas. Only the third interstellar visitor ever confirmed. But on January 11th, 2026, researchers published something extraordinary. Based on its velocity and trajectory through the galaxy, 3I Atlas may be 14 billion years old, nearly as old as the universe itself, three times older than our sun. It may have formed in one of the first generations of star systems less than a billion years after the Big Bang, an ancient traveller drifting between stars for eons, and now, for a brief moment, passing through our neighbourhood. But age isn't what has NASA on alert. It is what 3I Atlas is doing as it moves away from the sun, because it is behaving in ways no comet should. And as of January 11th, radio telescopes around the world have detected something that is forcing us to ask uncomfortable questions. My name is Mikhail. Join me as we investigate the oldest object humans have ever photographed up close, explore why its behaviour violates basic physics, and examine the radio signals that have activated NASA's planetary defence protocols. In 67 days, 3I Atlas will pass Jupiter, in what may be our last chance to understand what we're really looking at. Here is what normal comets do. As they approach the Sun, ice sublimates, creating a glowing coma and a tail pushed away by solar wind. As they move farther from the Sun, they cool, activity decreases, the tail weakens, basic thermodynamics. 3I Atlas is doing the opposite. The Hubble Space Telescope captured images on January 7th using a special filter that removes circular structures and highlights jets. What it revealed is a triple jet structure. The dominant jet points directly at the sun, an anti-tail extending over 500,000 kilometers, traveling against solar wind and radiation pressure. It is tightly collimated, 11.6 times longer than it is wide. Two additional jets shoot perpendicular to the sun, not away from it as physics predicts and this structure is getting stronger as 3I Atlas moves farther from the heat source. For comparison, normal comets show diffuse irregular jets pointing away from the Sun. This is organised, symmetric, intensifying when it should be fading. The physics doesn't work. You might think, maybe it is just large dust particles with high ejection velocity. That is a reasonable hypothesis. Large particles would resist radiation pressure more effectively but we can calculate what velocities would be needed to maintain a 500,000 km anti-tail against solar wind pressure at this distance. The numbers don't add up. Typical cometary outgassing produces velocities of 0.5 to 1 km per second. To create this structure would require velocities several times higher, energies we have never measured from cometary sublimation. And it would need to be sustained, constant, not the episodic bursts we typically see from rotating comet nuclei. So if it is not thermal sublimation, what is providing the energy? That is when astronomers started looking deeper at where this object came from, and that is when the age estimates emerged. The method is elegant. Analyse how 3I Atlas moves relative to nearby stars. Most stars in our galactic neighbourhood orbit at similar speeds. They are all part of the same stellar population, born around the same time. But 3 Atlas is moving differently. Its velocity is consistent with objects from an older stellar population, one that formed when the galaxy had different dynamics. It is like forensic astronomy. Every generation of stars has a distinct motion signature based on when and where it formed. By analysing 3 I Atlas's velocity, researchers can trace it back to a population of objects that formed in the very early universe. It is not just speed, it is chemistry. The first stars were made of pure hydrogen and helium. They didn't have iron or carbon. If spectroscopy shows 3I Atlas is metal poor, that is a chemical timestamp proving it was born before the galaxy was polluted with heavy metals, 14 billion years old. The uncertainty is large, maybe plus or minus 2 or 3 billion years. But even with that margin, we are looking at an object that predates our entire solar system by a staggering amount. The star system that birthed 3I Atlas likely no longer exists. If it formed around a massive star, that star would have died billions of years ago. 
which means three Atlas has been drifting through interstellar space, alone, for most of cosmic history. It may have passed within light years of thousands of other star systems. It has witnessed the Milky Way evolve from chaos into the spiral we know today, and by pure chance, its path brought it through our solar system, where our telescopes could finally see it. For a handful of months, this ancient traveller is visible. Then it will be gone, continuing a journey that may never end. But before it leaves, it is doing something that demands explanation. Then, the radio telescope started detecting emissions. The Meerkat array in South Africa picked up signals at 1.6 gigahertz. The very large array in New Mexico confirmed it. Multiple observations, same frequency, consistent characteristics. Now, 1.6 gigahertz is significant. It is the hydroxyl line. When water molecules break apart under UV radiation, they emit at this exact frequency. Comets are full of water. We expect this emission. In fact, we use it to measure water content. But here is the problem. Water sublimation creates continuous broadband emissions, essentially static that fade smoothly as the comet moves away from the sun. What is being detected from 3i Atlas is different. The reports describe it as consistent and structured. That means there is a pattern to it, modulation, something that distinguishes it from random thermal noise. Water vapour doesn't create structured signals, it creates noise. Structured emissions require a mechanism that modulates the signal in non-random ways. Think about the waterhole. That's the region of the radio spectrum between hydrogen at 1.4 GHz and hydroxyl at 1.7 GHz. CT researchers monitor this band precisely because it is relatively quiet, free from natural radio noise. If you wanted to send a signal that could be heard across interstellar distances, this is where you would send it. But we are not talking about SETI here. We are talking about a comet. Comets emit at 1.6 GHz naturally. That is basic molecular physics. The question isn't why this frequency, it is why the structure. What natural process creates modulation in hydroxyl emissions? One possibility is hydroxyl masers. Under specific conditions, high density, specific excitation states, hydroxyl emissions can become coherent, amplified, creating what is essentially a natural laser at radio wavelengths. We have detected hydroxyl masers in star-forming regions and around certain evolved stars. They are rare, but they exist. Could a comet's coma create the right conditions for maser action? The densities would need to be high, the geometry would need to be precise, but maybe. We have only studied three interstellar objects. Each has surprised us. Nature is creative, but consider what a maser actually is. Imagine a laser pointer, but made of gas clouds. For a comet to do this naturally, the geometry has to be perfect, a straight line of excited gas pointing directly at Earth. If 3 Atlas rotates even one degree, the laser should shut off, but it hasn't shut off. If it is a maser, we would expect certain characteristics. We would expect the signal to vary with the comet's rotation as different regions of the coma come into view. We would expect the frequency to drift slightly as Doppler shifts change with viewing geometry. We would expect the intensity to correlate with distance from the sun. More solar heating means more hydroxyl production means stronger signals. The observations so far are limited, but what is being reported doesn't quite match those predictions. The signal is maintaining coherence as 3E Atlas moves farther from the sun. The structure is consistent across multiple observations separated by days, which brings us back to the anti-tail, the triple jet structure, the symmetric geometry, all of it intensifying when it should be fading. In response, NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office activated enhanced monitoring protocols. Not because 3 I Atlas threatens Earth, it passed safely at 270 million kilometers, but because this object is doing something that demands every available telescope be pointed at it while we still can. Hubble is tracking changes in the nucleus and measuring rotation rates. James Webb is analysing infrared signatures to determine composition. The Very Large Telescope in Chile is performing spectroscopy to identify molecules in the coma. Meerkat and the VLA continue monitoring the radio emissions, searching for patterns, global coordination. Dozens of institutions, hundreds of scientists, all focused on one question. What is this thing? The scientific consensus remains that 3i Atlas is natural an interstellar comet with unusual but ultimately explainable characteristics. 
Perhaps the radio emissions are hydroxyl masers. Perhaps large dust particles are being ejected with unusually high velocities. Perhaps the nucleus has exotic composition that we haven't seen before. These explanations require special circumstances, but nature is creative. This is how science advances. Anomalies force us to expand our models. But some researchers aren't satisfied. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb has pointed out the statistical improbabilities stacking up. The trajectory entering near the ecliptic plane, unusual but possible. The rotation axis pointed at the Sun within 7 degrees, strange but not impossible. The unprecedented jet structure, the structured radio emissions, the 14 billion year age, each anomaly individually could be rare coincidence. But all of them together, one in a hundred thousand. He argues we have an obligation to consider all hypotheses, including technological origins. Not to assume aliens, but to honestly ask, could this be artificial? Could this be something designed rather than assembled by natural processes? And if we refuse to ask that question, are we doing science or practicing dogma? Most astronomers disagree. Not about the existence of life. Many believe the universe is teeming with it. But because extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, everything we are seeing can be explained even if the explanations stretch our understanding. Jumping to technology without exhausting natural explanations would be premature. But the debate itself reveals something important. We don't know, not yet. The data is real. The anomalies are real. The mystery is genuine. And in 67 days, we will get our best chance at answers. In March 2026, 3i Atlas will pass Jupiter. Not just a flyby, a passage through the most extreme electromagnetic environment in the solar system outside the Sun itself. Jupiter's magnetic field is 20,000 times stronger than Earth's, extending millions of kilometres into space. To understand the violence of this test, look at the scale. If you could see Jupiter's magnetic tail from Earth, it would be bigger than the full Moon. It is a particle accelerator the size of a star system. 3i Atlas isn't just flying past a planet, it is flying through a scanner. If 3i Atlas is producing electromagnetic emissions, Jupiter's environment will amplify, distort and interact with them in ways we can measure. It is a natural laboratory that will subject this object to conditions completely different from anything it encountered near Earth or Mars. The solar wind will be weaker at Jupiter's distance. Five times farther from the Sun means much less pressure. But the magnetic environment will be vastly more powerful. Any emissions will be forced to reveal their nature under Jupiter's influence. This is our last chance. After the flyby, Jupiter's gravity will accelerate 3i Atlas to even higher speeds, sending it back into interstellar space. Within months, it will be too faint for detailed study. Within a year, it will cross Saturn's orbit and fade from view. Within a decade, it will leave the solar system entirely, and then it is gone. Back into the darkness between stars, continuing a journey that may never end. Whatever we discover at Jupiter will determine how this story ends. If the radio emissions change in predictable ways based on Jupiter's magnetic field, if the jets behave as exotic natural physics predicts, if spectroscopy reveals composition that explains the anomalies, then we will have expanded our understanding of cometary science. We will have learned that nature, as always, is more creative than our model suggested. But if Jupiter reveals something that doesn't fit natural explanations, if the emissions show patterns that resist every conventional interpretation, if this 14 billion year old traveller from another star system continues to defy our understanding, then we will face a more profound question. For thousands of years, humans have watched comets and wondered. We have stripped away superstition and replaced it with understanding. We know what comets are, how they form, why they behave as they do. We have made them predictable. 3 Eye Atlas asks us to hold that certainty lightly. To remember that the universe is vast, that we have barely begun exploring it, that objects drifting between stars for billions of years might carry surprises we never anticipated. In March, Jupiter will force this object to show its hand. Whether those revelations fit comfortably into our models or challenge everything we thought we knew about what travels through interstellar space, we will know soon. Until then, 3 I Atlas continues its journey. 14 billion years in the making, six months in our cosmic neighborhood. One final test ahead, and we're watching.